Hey, good evening one and all and welcome to the video. This video I want to talk about a very interesting pattern that most of the people are using on AWS that is asynchronous invocation patterns. Well, one of the pattern is essentially the producers are producing messages at a very high rate and publishing it to the queue. The internal polling lambda polls the queue and the consumer consumes the messages from the queue in batches. Well, this video, I'm going to replicate a scenario where the, where the producers are producing messages at an extremely high rate and the consumers are going to consume the messages uh, from, the, from the queue. And if a particular message is failed, we'll publish it to a dead letter queue. Remember, the goal is to learn about dead letter queue, how to in uh, integrate all of that. I'm going to do, th do this through a UI right now, but eventually I'm going to do it through a serverless framework because that's the way you want to learn. All right, enough of talking. Let's get started. All right, I'm on my SQS queue. I'm, I'm gonna create a very first queue that I'm gonna call this. Uh, my queue name would be Lambda. So this is gonna be my Lambda queue, which is gonna hold messages. Uh, the retention period that I wanna keep for, um, uh, I wanna keep for one hour, and then uh, I would leave everything uh, rest to the default. I, however, do wanna change one small thing. Uh, not this one, but let's create the queue first. So I'm gonna create the queue, going back to the queue. Now I'm gonna create a Lambda dead letter queue. Uh, this is a very, very popular pattern, uh, you know, people like to use. So Lambda DL queue, cl click on create, we go to queue. Now I'm gonna go to my Lambda queue, head over to the dead letter, and then I'm gonna click on edit. And then I am gonna go to dead letter. I'm gonna click on enable. I'm gonna select uh, the my dead letter queue ARN. Maximum receives, I'm gonna change it to one. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go to the queue. Uh, so here I have that and my dead letter is configured now. Now my next part is the Lambda. The Lambda is a piece of cake, very easy. All I'm doing is, as you can see, event. Uh, I'm using a list comprehension. If I'm saying for records in records, uh, you know, get the data, oops get the data in batches and I'm essentially counting the length. Okay, so nothing crazy here, a very simple Lambda grabbing the data from the batch in batches from the from the from the queue. All right. So what 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 else? Well, I, I have this. Let me remove this so I can show you from scratch. So gonna click on delete. So at this point, we have a queue, right? We, um, uh, we have a dead letter queue. We have a Lambda, which is our consumer. It's going to consume messages. And let me refresh my screen uh, quickly. And then I'm, I'll add triggers in dead letter queue here. Um, as I said, what, so, so, uh, let me also keep talking about some of the good practices, uh, you know, you, you want to follow, right? When you're working with asynchronous patterns, uh, you know, always try to go to concurrency, reserve the number of concurrency to at least 100 or based on your batch size. If your batch size is, let's say, I don't know, 10, at least reserve five of um, uh, as a reserved concurrency. If you expect a very high throughput, uh, then you can also uh, go for provisional concurrency, which means when a Lambda runs, essentially it pulls a container, loads the uh, you know, code and then runs it. There's a time there's a, there's a time that takes, that's called a cold start. In order to avoid that, you can go for provisional concurrency. I'm not gonna do that. For now, I'm just gonna use a reserved concurrency. I'm gonna say 10 is more than enough. Um, I have a special video just on concurrency if you wanna watch, so uh, you know, that, that's that. Now let's come down to the asynchronous invocation. Let's come here uh, and let's set up my dead letter queue. Uh, so I'm gonna click, uh, I think I already had one, but I'm gonna reconfigure it again because that queue no longer exists. So let me show you that, very, very easy. And as I said, you wanna do this through a, a serverless framework, not through a UI, okay? Um, so SQS, then I'm gonna select my Lambda DLQ. I'm gonna click on save. So at this point, uh, my dead letter queue is configured. Now I just have to configure the triggers. Not sure this took a lot. Oh, it's still deleting though, it's fine. So now I'm gonna add my trigger and I'm gonna select SQS. And then um, over here, batch size is 10. You can make batch size however you, how much ever you want. I usually prefer around less than 100, uh, you know. And then make sure your Lambda has enough execution time. Uh, batch window, um, uh, so as you can see, you can read here more, the maximum amount of time to gather records before invoking a function. I usually like to keep it, um, more than uh, the uh, the lambda timeout time that that's what I prefer. But for now, zero is fine. 
okay so that's pretty much it and i'm gonna click on oh, i forgot to select the queue this is gonna come from lambda queue click on add and my entire architecture is ready so as soon as i um, publish messages here uh, this one is thing still being deleted okay so as soon as i publish messages at a pretty high rate the uh, the producers are producing gonna produce the messages consumers are gonna consume messages and i'm gonna replicate that scenario in a second so let's wait that's my lambda is fine just making sure everything is fine. Okay, so we are ready to test this out. Uh, by the way, uh, I have purposely wrote an error here, raise exception, error, I'm going to die. The reason I'm doing it, I want it to fail to show you the dead letter logic, okay? So this is my producer, which is gonna produce messages at an extremely high rate. Here, I'm gonna put my Lambda queue name. So let me go back to SQS. I'm gonna go to Lambda, uh, oh sorry sqs queue name and then i am gonna replace this with this one and we are ready to roll so uh i'm gonna run my handler and remember at this point these all are gonna be pretty rapidly uh publishing messages these are producer producing messages so the producer has produced messages now consumer are ready to you know consume messages as you can see 10 over here now as you know our lambda is gonna try three times uh, as you can see from the asynchronous invocation, I have a re retry of two times. Now, after a second time, if it fails, these messages should go to a dead letter queue. That is my understanding. Uh, that's how it should work. Now it's trying for the second time, I guess. So waiting, still waiting, still waiting. And this usually takes time based on uh, the settings you have provided for the SQS and all of that, okay? So again, uh, let's keep waiting. All right, there you go, guys. Dead letter queue, purposely failed those messages. Now I can show you actually send receive messages. We can pull from messages. These are all my dead letter messages. So I'm gonna open up one of them. And as you can see, Linda, uh, that one. And if I go back here, uh, as you can see, the so the entire batch was rejected based on your batch size, right? So very, very, very popular. Uh, pattern usually people like to uh, go for that is sqs lambda dead letter classy pattern and on usually on a dead letter queue uh, people like to publish it to an sns uh, where they have an alarms configured which means anytime a batch rejects you get email notification saying that hey this one failed so you can reprocess it or whatever you want to do with that right hope you have enjoyed this small walkthrough and if you did enjoy the video let me know in the comment section below and with that being said keep smiling keep programming see you guys in the next aws tutorial